Hello, everyone, and welcome to the EVN Disrupt podcast. My name is Najdet Zatryan. I'm the editor of the creative tech section here at EVN Report. My guest today is Haik Chobanyan, the executive director of UATE. We spoke about several of UATE's initiatives, including Agmat Laboratories and the upcoming Digitech Summit and Expo. Haik also shared with us his thoughts on how the tech sector needs to be positioned globally. Thank you for listening. Mr. Chabanyan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Mr. Chabanyan, I want to start with a little bit about UATE. Um, we've had on a lot of guests over the last year from industry and also from organizations that work to develop the tech sector in Armenia, um, but we haven't spoken that much about UAT yet. So can you tell our listeners about what it is that UAT does and the importance of it in our ecosystem? UAT was established in 2000. It was the time of revival of Armenian IT sector because after the Soviet time uh, was a very difficult period for Armenian industry generally, but especially for high tech because without electricity, we cannot have high tech industry. So fortunately, 2000 was a very important time, I think, for the development of Armenian high-tech sector. Uh, first of all, it was about IT, about outsourcing, etc., and thanks to diaspora Armenians, uh, mainly U.S. Armenians, for the initiative that time. And now we have already a sector with about 3,000 entities. Is it fair to call UAT uh, an advocacy organization for, for tech in Armenia? As association, the first uh, direction in our activity is an advocacy. And during the last 20 more years, we did a lot of work on this. Uh, we created a lot of initiatives of law changes, etc. And we owned only 50 laws which helped uh, Armenian high-tech industry uh, to develop in the country and to be competitive with the world. What are some ongoing legislative challenges that UAT is tackling? In this moment, of course, the first challenge what we have is a currency issue. That's why last year we put it a lot of efforts on that. And fortunately, we had a solution in the end of year and hope that this year we will have new, more institutional solutions on that. And this is a big challenge. Of course, it's a worldwide challenge, but mainly it's about Armenia because our currency, the rate of our currency is very high. And this is very bad for export sector of Armenia and particularly for for high tech sector. For tech, yeah. Yeah. So the solution that was put into place towards the end of last year was that um, the government agreed to reimburse one quarter's worth of uh, salary tax that was paid by the tech companies. What is a more institutional or fundamental change that could come into place to tackle the rapid rise of the dirham's value against the uh, so, some Some procedures regarding with the financial sector, and uh, there are solutions in the world, and now we're working on these kind of solutions uh, in Armenia, uh, where we're working with the uh, government institutions uh, who are responsible for these kind of directions. It's, uh, it's all, uh, for example, Fisher's solution for companies and now we're working with banks in order to have solution, to have appropriate uh, procedures. Because by law it's possible, but in actual life it's not working mm. yet. Hope that we will have solutions soon. I was surprised to learn that some countries that work predominantly with foreign currencies, such as Armenia, their banks have features where they can lock in a certain currency rate for a exactly. prolonged period of time. So it's, a, it's one financial yes, it's, instrument. It's about that. that. It's yeah. about that. And is my understanding that that exists in Armenia today, but the implementation of it isn't happening? Or? By law, it's, it's possible, but we need to create procedures which uh, will be workable, let's say, because right. in reality, it's not working. Right. Okay. So we'll look forward to hearing more yeah. about that in the future. One of the primary uh, initiatives that UAT has started over the years is the Armat uh, Laboratories. Um, which are these programs across schools in Armenia that provide um, high-tech education to to students in the country. My understanding now is that it spans the entire country, every region, including uh, in Artsakh. There are Armat laboratories operating. And recently, the UAT has expanded the model to outside of Armenia as well. Tell us a little bit about specifically what the role the Armat laboratories are playing in developing the tech ecosystem outside of Yerevan, because there's a lot of opportunities obviously within Yerevan existing, but it's exciting that the playing field is being leveled for students outside of the capital. Before 2010, uh, high-tech industry was working mainly with the universities because we considered the universities, only universities as a place 
where we can have professional education and can lead the promotion of tech education to the students. But then we understood that in order to uh, promote development of IT education, we should go to the schools. And we went there uh, in 2011, 2012, opening robotics labs in several schools. It was somehow the pilot project for us. And in 2014, after that stage, we established Armat uh, Engineering Laboratories uh, for Armenian schools. And now we call it Armat Engineering Program because it's not just a lab. The lab is just one component of this program. It's students, coaches, methodology, curriculum, etc., etc., and including lab. We should call it precisely in order to understand that it's not about only just one lab. It can be lab of chemistry or math, etc. So now we have 640 labs in all Armenia, including Artsakh. We have labs in Java, more than 10 labs in Java. And here uh, we are teaching not only engineering. By the way, it's quite complex engineering education because it includes uh, software development, 3D modeling, robotics with mechanics, mechatronics, electronics, etc. Uh, but also we are giving some soft skills which are very important for kids, uh, including entrepreneurship knowledge and skills because they are doing project-based education and plus, of course, knowledge about their homeland. Mm -hmm. And majority of the projects are connecting with the land or community or country, which gives an opportunity to uh, give much more to our children, our students, than just engineering. Now we have about 18,000 students involved in the process. And this infrastructure includes also about 15 events during the year, contests, camps, exhibitions, etc., uh, which are very important part of all ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Last year, we started several programs in Armenian communities. Last year, we established labs in Armenian communities outside. And outside I, call it, I call it pan-Armenian approach of Armat. And this is very important uh, based on explanation what I did uh, now, uh, because these skills, this knowledge is very important not only uh, Armenians in Armenia, but also Armenians out of Armenia. Even I can say that it's much more important because in Armenia they can have another opportunities, kids will have another opportunities, uh, you know, to learn Armenian, to learn something about country, about their villages, uh, cities, etc., and implementation of Armat in Armenian communities. First of all, it's a national and strategic program for us. Uh, in the beginning of December, we opened lab in Glendale, and uh, in the middle of March, we are going to have grand opening of that school mm -hmm. or educational center uh, in Glendale. The opening will be uh, in 18 of March, and after that, we are going to organize awareness events in Glendale, San Francisco, and Silicon Valley. Uh, so we have opening in March 18. Uh, we have awareness event in Glendale Hero House in March 19. Uh, we have awareness event in Cupertino in uh, March 25. And we have awareness event in San Francisco in March 26. Awesome. Before we get to the labs outside of Armenia, something you said a little bit earlier that really interested me. You said in addition to the education that the students of Armat receive about technical skills, engineering, robotics, and, and other areas, they do things that are tied to their country, problems in their community, maybe society, etc. Is the goal with that to encourage them to use those skills for the improvement, for the betterment of their country? Because one of the common criticisms sometimes we hear of our tech ecosystem is that we're constantly building solutions that are often not what are the most urgent things that we need in our country. So they're, they're global solutions as we should be focused on because that's how you build and scale global companies. But often that comes at the expense of putting aside some of the issues we have here in Armenia. Um, so is one of the goals of that approach that Agmat has taken to encourage Agmat graduates to use their skills in Armenia for Armenia? Yes, and uh, plus to love country 
and in order to love country they need to know country mm -hmm. so that's why actually we are giving this uh, love through the projects what they are doing for their communities for their cities and for the country we understand that these kids after the graduation they can uh, learn study work everywhere in the world because they are very strong and in order to keep them in the country to keep them in their communities uh, we are giving this kind of skills and emotion also and the emotional right. component of armad is very important for us first of all considering the role of this kind of people in the future for the country it's about values as well yeah so. yeah interesting in terms of uh, opening labs outside of armenia you mentioned glendale which is the center of sort of armenian american life is this the first one outside of Armenia and Java that you'll be opening in the diaspora? This year we had an opening in Kuwait, right. in Armenian School of Kuwait. Uh, last year we opened uh, Armat Lab in uh, Paris, France, uh, Armenian School. So uh, no, it's not the first, right. but let's say it's the first stage of implementation of Armat Labs in Pan-Armenian right. area. I didn't even know we had a school in Kuwait, so yeah. that's interesting. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's get to uh, Digitech, which is um, this big conference that UAT organizes every year. I believe this is the 18th edition. It started in 2005. Tell us a little bit about Digitech and also provide the context for this upcoming Digitech in March because I know it was postponed from the fall. Yes, actually, the Digitech uh, called Digitech 22 right. because we postponed it from the September of uh, 2022 connecting with the events what we had in the beginning of the month and now we are organizing it from 10 to 12 of uh, March. Digitech is usually the main event of the sector and is the best place to introduce sector, to present sector, to collaborate with each other because uh, the sector is growing very fast. Uh, annual growing is 25%, but last year's were very big changes, even in these numbers, which are, again, quite high. You know, well, last year we have almost uh, additional 1,000 startups in the country. The same was in 2021. So it means that the sector is growing very fast and you cannot, you know, feel all these changes if you don't have appropriate platforms for that. Mm -hmm. And Digitech is the best platform for that. And also for foreigners who are interested on Armenian tech sector for the collaboration, cooperation, for the opening their branches in Armenia, etc. And we will have big delegations uh, from out of Armenia. Uh, from uh, traditional countries, markets like US, Europe, Russia, but from also non-traditional like Arabic countries, African countries, which is very important for us to show uh, our country because the positioning of the country generally is very important for uh, UAT and for Armenia generally. And these days, we are finishing new branding of Armenian tech sector and uh, one of the news in Digitech will be the presentation of new branding of Armenian tech sector. The second, uh, we will have the biggest exhibition area during the Digitech history, more than 2,000 square meter. We will have additional area for educational sector who are doing tech education programs, and we will have startup uh, part with the support of Ministry of High Tech Industry of Armenia. So I think that it will be three day uh, celebration, three days hard work, and these three days concert and sports center uh, will be the main destination for Armenian high tech sector. And I hope for our people generally, right. because it's one of the favorite place for people and for businesses. I remember in the fall before it got postponed, uh, just like 22, there was a lot of messaging about how this year was more about bringing the world to Armenia, about this being a regional conference. And you mentioned as you were presenting uh, what people can expect that you guys will be showcasing or presenting the rebranding of the Armenian tech sector. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And can you shed some light on why there needs to be some rebranding? How do we need to show Armenia's tech sector to the world? I think Armenian tech sector has uh, quite interesting uniqueness. And we need to show this uniqueness because tech is not only for Armenia, but it's priority for 
uh, dozens of countries. But for Armenia, it's critical priority because we don't have any other chances to overcome all challenges we are facing. And in all strategic documents, what you can see, including Armenia 2050, uh, which is which is actually government policy, Armenia 2040, which is private policy. So high tech plays very big role. Even we can say that about at least 70 percent in the strategy. Mm -hmm. It means that the sector should be developed very fast. We cannot uh, develop the sector isolated because the sector is very global. Right. So it means that you should have your real and honorable place on the map of tech world. So for this, we should emphasize who we are, what are the main advantages we have, and what are the main strategic directions we should emphasize in our projects, in our uh, initiatives, and we should develop in our country because the tech sector is very wide and it becomes wider and wider every year. You cannot do everything. You should have your focuses in order to reach your destination. Mm -hmm. So that's why these kind of uh, platforms, which called branding or uh, gathering together all our uh, capacities, opportunities, on to find a solution for the country, for the sector, is very important as a message to that sector, as a message to the community, as a message to the government persons and to the world. Can you speak a little bit about what those strategic initiatives need to be? I think we can point several directions which are already quite developed in the country to focus on that. Uh, first of all, what we see in the sector, the AI is growing very fast. So even I can say day by day, not month by month, we see new initiatives, new centers of excellence, new companies who are working on this, which is very good. And is connected and is connected with the experience and traditions, what we have, including traditions in education. So what kind of institutions do we have? Plus, there are several other directions which are important that I would like to emphasize one more, which is IoT, because we cannot develop our country appropriately without the involvement of uh, engineering sector. Mm -hmm. uh, IT is not enough for that. And uh, in engineering, we see quite interesting growth in IoT sector, uh, including in industrial IoT, which is very good, and they are very unique companies what we have. So it means that after the branding, we need to work very precisely on the, on the strategic documentations. It's important that the government is doing this, but it can come from the private sector and became tool for government also. So the same we are doing with the branding, and we introduced already our branding to the government, to the Ministry of High Tech Industry, and uh, we are going to reach this destination for the success together mm -hmm. with the government. What's your pitch to foreign companies looking at Armenia as a destination for opening a branch, opening up an office? Why should they come to Armenia? Uh, I think that the most important advantage what we have in the country is educational system, which is critical for tech sector because uh, the tech sector is always about talent. So if you have talent, you are interesting. Uh, that's why this education program and promotion of education programs, what we are doing, ARMAT, TUMO, other education programs, is very important. And this is somehow the positioning Armenia. How is Armenia? Armenia is a country with a unique tech education solutions, non-standard education solutions, which can be usable even abroad in other countries, not only in Armenia. And I think this is the strongest message what we can give companies or, or institutions or individuals who are interested to come to Armenia. That's an interesting answer. I, to be honest, I wasn't expecting the talent part to be the, yeah. the part that you emphasized. And it's interesting that both Argmat and Tumo now have successfully sort of exported this, their education yes. models around the world. So there's Tumos and opening up in, in several countries as well. Uh, let me also to add that in Digitech uh, Expo, we'll have Digitech Summit, uh, right. which we established actually in 2021. And this year summit is about how small countries can 
overcome challenges in the world through the tech sector uh, development. And mm. uh, this is very uh, important message to the world. I think we will have very interesting event and because we have about 40 speakers already uh, for five panel discussions. Uh, but also we are going to position this event, Digitech Summit, as an event for small countries who has an ambition to develop the countries and to be strong through the tech, edu tech development. So like emerging tech hubs, emerging tech ecosystems. Yes, and I think this summit can uh, be an uh, international good destination for small countries, for emerging countries, who need to go through this direction. Right. And Mr. Jobanian, we have a sort of traditional final question at yeah. the podcast. Um, we ask our guests uh, where they hope to see, whether it's their startup or their company in five to 10 years. But since you're involved really at the foundational level of developing the ecosystem, I'd like to hear your, your answer about what it is you think that the Armenian tech sector should be focused on in the next five to 10 years to continue its growth and where you hope to see it in the near future? It's a hard one. Yes. Now about 5% of tech sector is involved uh, in the strategic projects of Armenia. Uh, my goal, I believe that it will be happen that in five years, at least 50% of our uh, community will be involved in the strategic project of, for Armenia. Can you define what you mean by strategic projects? I mean for security, I mean for the development of the country, because majority of our sector is just uh, taxpayers. Right. But I would like that they will be more than taxpayers. I, I said it was the last question, but you opened up such an interesting topic yeah. that I have to ask one more. <laughs> um, so for instance, a big part of Armenia's economy is agriculture. And we have some agrotech companies in, in Armenia, but a lot of them are focused on the global market for understandable reasons. What is something that either organizations like UAT in collaboration with the public sector maybe can do to incentivize that number to grow from 5% to 50%? Like what needs to be done to get there? I would like to uh, speak about two initiatives, what we had already, what we started already, for, uh, particularly for agritech development. The first initiative is uh, establishment of innovation centers in the region. Mm -hmm. And when we established innovation center in Tavush, in Ijevan, we decided that there should be three main directions for tech development there. And one of these directions is agriculture. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the economy in, in Tavush uh, is mainly about agriculture. And agri-tech is one of the main directions where what we are developing in, in that sector, both in the uh, education programs, acceleration programs, startup development programs, etc. And the second initiative is about ARMAT contest, uh, which called ARM Robotics. It's one of the most famous uh, contests what we have under the ARMAT program umbrella. And last contest what about Agritech. So uh, several hundreds uh, of groups from Armenian villages and cities came to Dilijan to introduce their solutions for agriculture. So uh, these are uh, not the only uh, you know, activities what we are doing for this because uh, we are cooperating very good with the Agricultural University. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a platform we are uh, working with the universities. It's called Armenian Technological Future. Mm -hmm. And in this platform, we have five universities and five rectors in the board. One of them, uh, Agrarian University, Mr. Rutian. And we are working with uh, him also in order to establish special agri-tech direction in our educational system as an ARMAT advanced program. Mm. So that's fantastic. quite a big range of activities, is particularly for agriculture. I'm glad you brought up the Ijevan Innovation Center. I wanted to touch on that earlier in our conversation. So this is an innovation center you guys opened up over the last year, I believe. And uh, I'm assuming one of, the, one of the reasons for it is to give your Agmat students an opportunity to stay in their home communities instead of being forced to maybe move to Yerevan or abroad to use their skills. Can you talk about how you guys attempt to close this cycle, chain, the yeah. chain, yeah. Um, how do you guys envision building an ecosystem that will enable your students in the regions to, to stay in their home communities if that's what they choose to do? So what opportunities can we create for them? Uh, first, our education 
program or projects are somehow value chain mm -hmm. creation of uh, talent development. Uh, so children are starting uh, to study from 10 and then they are coming to the high school. They have an opportunity for more advanced education programs yeah, like ARMAT UAV, which is aerial robotics program. Uh, then they are going to the vocational education institution like real school mm -hmm. which is uh, which is uh, also about generally it's about high tech education and then they need to have some platforms for an entrepreneurship development and our goal to keep the children in the region because usually after that they are coming to Yerevan right. directly I would like to uh, introduce some uh, statistics regarding with uh, graduation. Last year we had 2,600 graduates from Armat. Around Armenia. Yeah, around Armenia, which is very good number and increasing uh, year by year. Uh, we did a research with the Grand Turn in 2017 and last year. Based on that, about 87% uh, of our uh, graduates are going to the universities. Mm -hmm. About 5% of them are opening their startups. And about 80% of students who are uh, studying in universities are parallelly working in the IT companies. Mm -hmm. So it means that the system is working. Right. So, and in order to keep this, uh, let's say, infrastructure in the regions, uh, we need some centers of excellence where they can uh, reach uh, their goals regarding with the study, regarding with their entrepreneurship development, startup development, and also, of course, for just a place where they can work, have their offices, because even this is a big issue in the regions. Yeah. So EJ1 is the first program, first project. Uh, even I can call it pilot project. Mm -hmm. And our goal to have these kind of centers in all Mars uh, centers, uh, which are 10 in Armenia in in, in next five years, and in all cities of Armenia, which are 43 in next, sorry, 10 years. 43 cities uh, are very important because usually they are regional centers, right. uh, like, you know, Noyemberian for Noyemberian region, etc. So this is very important to have this kind of centers of excellencies in all our cities. And only that time we will uh, reach that goal, what we hope uh, and we are putting in our strategies. Yeah, I wish you guys a lot of luck with that. I think it's an extremely important initiative. Um, and I hope to, I hope you'll join us again in the future to, to share with us those, how, uh, how the, the pro project develops. Mr. Chabanian, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.